Hi guys, it's Prophet and I'm back with another video. I love y'all so much. I do. I just love y'all. I'll be reading y'all comments and I just be like, you know, it gives you such a hope in the world. <laughs> it does. It gives you such hope in the world. I'm like, I just love y'all. I love reading like the different things that God is doing for y'all or the things that y'all are believing God to do or just y'all encouraging words. Like, I really love it. I really do. It's very encouraging because it's not easy. Sometimes putting these words out, it's not easy. And it's not easy also like walking this life out, being saved, you know, really trying to do things the right way and having to cut ties with certain people and having to stand for what is right. It is not easy. Okay. It's not easy. A lot of people, you know, they live any kind of way. And so when you have a certain relationship with God, you have a certain man, so you can't just do what other people do. You can't listen to what you want to listen to, watch what you want to watch. You can't go where you want to go. You can't bite back. It's money saying something. You can't bite back. Like I'd be wanting to bite back. I'd be wanting to literally be like, <laughs> just like talk trash back but you can't do those things right so it sacrifices in this so i appreciate all of y'all comments and all of y'all words i'll be reading them i'll be like you know what it's really encouraging it really is it really is um so let's pray and i'll get right into the word okay Father God, I bless you right now, Lord God. I thank you right now, Father God, for every good gift that you're giving your children in this hour, Lord God. I bless you right now for this day today, God. I bless you for the gift that you have given me, Father God, to share with your people, Father. I just love you so much, God. We just love you. We all love you, Lord God, and we trust your plans that you have for our life, oh God. I pray right now, Father God, that you would forgive us for anything that we have done that was not like you, oh God. I pray right now, God, that you would have your way, Father, that you would speak through me as your instrument, oh God. I yield myself to you now. Holy Spirit, come in and have your way in the mighty name of Jesus. I bind up now every single thing the enemy would try to do to detour this video, any distractions, or even as the people are watching, oh God, I pray that you open up their ears, God, that they have an ear to hear, Father God. I pray, Father God, that they receive it in their hearts, so that they retain it in their spirits, oh God. I love you so much, God, and I bless you. Hide me behind your cross right now, Lord God, that they will not see me, but they will hear you, oh God. They will not see me, but they will hear you in the mighty name of Jesus. We bind up any negative comments, any any anything that will cause us to doubt you, anything that will cause us to be fearful, we bind it up now in the mighty name of Jesus. It is in your precious name we pray, amen, amen, and amen. Okay. So earlier today, y'all was giving me a good snooze per usual. Okay, I'm always snoozing, right? Okay, per usual, I was giving me a good old snooze um, this morning when I woke up from my good old snooze. All right, when I was dropping my daughter off and I was headed back home. Um, okay, do you know how we say we're too blessed to be stressed? All right, so I said that he had me saying that he was like, "You're too blessed to be stressed." Continue to say that. I hear you, Holy Spirit. And so there was a new saying, guys, a new saying that he said. He said, and I want you to say, you're too anointed to be disappointed, y'all. That's what he said. I was trying to remember because I was like, oh, my goodness. And so I was supposed to do the video right then. But leave it to Beaver. I wanted to take a nap, okay? Because I was like, look, I got a long day. We got service tonight. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to go take a nap, okay? And so I waited until I woke up to give y'all this message. And he said, not only are you too blessed to be stressed, but you are too anointed to be disappointed in this hour. Listen to me. God says you're not going to be disappointed in this hour. You're not. It is your faith. It is, it is, it is literally, it is literally, I'm sorry, y'all can at least just get my faith a little bit better. It is literally y'all's faith. It is your faith that activates these promises of God. It is your faith, okay? God says, whatever you believe, that's what he's going to do. So if he's a pressing upon your heart to go to a car life, he's pressing upon your lot to apply for that job. If he's, if he's pressing it upon your heart um, to, to, to go back to school, if he's, whatever that thing is that, that the Holy Spirit is nudging you or whatever that thing is inside of you that just you really want this, like you've always wanted this. God is saying, go and do those things. I'm, I'm going to do it for you. I'm going to do it for you. A lot of us are kind of jaded because there's been so many times when you thought it was your time, but it wasn't your time, right? When you thought like, okay, this is it. And boom, it was a false start. Or you thought this is it. And it was just a test. Like, this is it. And then <laughs> just a nice a clip from underneath your feet, clipping you, okay? And you fall flat on your face. He's like, look, this ain't the hour for that, okay? This is not the hour. This is the hour where, where literally things have split. All right. Things, th things have split. Like there's been a separation. There has been a, there has been a separation y'all. There has been a separation. God's chosen ones, the, the, the divine righteous ones, the remnants, all of these, all of these, all of these, the children of God, all these, 
They are receiving promises and backed up promises and forgotten prayers that they thought was forgotten. They are receiving these things. And then the ones that's been partying, been short cousin, cut, uh, short uh, cutting, been bamboozling, half stepping, barely, you know, the ones running off every five minutes, falling and getting up, sitting privately. They're not being exposed and they're getting a whooping. Things have split. And we're talking about the children of God because we're all children of God, right? I'm not talking about the people that's working for the devil. I'm not talking about the ones that are complete because we, we get it sometimes. We get it sometimes misconstrued. We get it all mixed up, okay? Let me break something down for you. You have, the devil has children. There are some people that will never enter into heaven. There's people that will never uh, uh, call on the name of God. There's some, there's some people that are real satanic worshipers. These are the ones that are, that, that are the devil's, these are the devil's children, okay? These are straight demonic people, not people that have just done some things to you, hurt you, or, you know, just betrayed you. Not, not those kind of people. I'm talking about the real devil worshipers, the real witches, the psychics, the ones that have no chance of being saved, don't want to be saved, don't want to call on God, don't want to know about God, none of that. Okay, so those, they not even in this category. Okay, on God's side, God's children. Okay, and I don't want to hear somebody say, everybody's God's children whatever we're not all god's kids the devil got kids too okay anyway neither here nor there so i'm talking about god's children all right you have the chosen ones and you have the 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 give me the word holy spirit you have the the, the rebellious one hey oh god i love him so much oh i just love him so much like i can't make this stuff up like jesus lord y'all I love him so much. Like, I love him so much. Oh, God, I love you, Jesus. Just continue to speak through me. <laughs> I love him. Okay, so you have God's children. So you got you got the chosen ones and you got the rebellious ones, okay? There has been a rift now. There has been a rift. There's been a tear. There's been a separation of the wheats and the tares, okay? The rebellious ones are getting a whooping. They are getting what the wrath of God will come upon them. God has backed them into a corner. And I don't care how much they throw up their hands and they say, oh, God, this, no, God, that. He's like, now nah, you're going to get this with him. You won't, you won't catch this wrath. Okay, you, you're, you're going to get this. So, and then you have the, the chosen ones, the righteous ones, the ones that have been standing with God when it was hard. It was unpopular, but they were standing. They were fighting. They were loving. They were being persecuted. All this stuff, you know, these bad things have happened in their lives. And they kept pushing for it. They kept going. They kept believing. They kept working it. They kept whatever they need to do. They held on to God. They wouldn't let go. Okay. They wouldn't let go. Those. Okay. You have those on this side over here. And then you have the rebellious ones. There's been a split. So the ones now, the, 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 the remnant, the righteous, the ones that have held on in spite of, they didn't get a bad heart. They didn't start sinning. They didn't, they didn't just live any old kind of way. But you, you were faithful for real. You were holy for real. Even when people was trying to say, you ain't holy for real. You ain't blah, blah, blah. Well, guess what? I beg to differ, sweetie, because you in the promised land and they ain't, okay? So you know, the ones that was calling you holy, the, holier than thou, trying to gossip on your name, trying to, you know, trying to bring you down and tear you down, trying to do all these things and say all these things. It could be family, it could be wife, it could be husband, it could be brother, sister, it could be a friend from college, whoever, whatever that was. The ones that talked about you and were trying to say that you wasn't holy for real, you wasn't hearing from God for real, trying to do all these things. Listen, baby, you've made it now. And God says, now everything that I'm pressing upon you to do, go and do it. Go and do it because it's going to work this time. It has changed. I have separated the wheat from the tares now. He says, I have separated that. And he says, now, now he's literally pressing upon my heart to tell y'all that you are too anointed to be disappointed. You won't be disappointed in this hour. He says, you will not be disappointed in this hour. Whatever you can think to do, do it. It's going to work this time. Whatever there should be. No, I just, I just was doing a session with somebody. I was telling them, listen, God was saying that if you cry in this hour, it's a sign of dis, it's a sign, it's a sign of uh, disbelief and defeat. We, there should be no tears. Only tears we should be crying is overwhelmed happiness for the Lord. Or if his Holy Spirit is upon us so strong, we cry. There is no cry. If you cry in this hour, that is defeat. And that is disbelief in your God. He's saying, we have crossed over now. The promise of the Lord are yes and amen. Listen, he is blessing you now. Do not be afraid to go and occupy. Do not be afraid to, to, to apply for it. Don't be afraid to step out and do it. You shall win this time. It's not the same for you anymore. It's not the same. Things have changed for you. There will be no more rejection. I told y'all there will be no more rejection. There's no more no's. There's no more denials. It's not. You're going higher and higher and higher. You're being rewarded, baby. You are being rewarded. You're not hidden anymore. You are being rewarded. Everything that you can even think shall be yours. 
every promise that God spoke over you, it's yours. And guess what? People can go and try to lie all they want. Your fruit speaking for itself now. Your fruit is speaking for itself. Your fruit, your fruit speaking for itself. Times have changed for you. It's changed. And rebellious one, because I know you may watch this video. Listen, understand this. In the beginning of this video, I said there are different categories of people. Okay, you have the devil's kids, the ones that will, that ones that will never, uh, uh, never, uh, uh, they will continually denounce God. They won't know parts, which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. Okay, you're not on that side. You're on the other side of being rebellious, right? So you may be getting catching the wrath of God right now. You may be getting a whooping right now. You may be you may be two steps from reprobate mind right now. You may be two steps from being rejected right now. You may be in that place, but listen to me. This is the instruction of the Lord. Get on your face. Get on your face. It ain't over until God says it's over. It's not over until God says it's over, but you got some work to do. There's some work to do. There is some work for you to do. You have to do some work. That's what got you here to this place of rebellion is you didn't do the work. There's work to be done. And, and you cannot look at everybody else anymore because there's nobody there to look at now. You can't blame, you can't blame everybody around you anymore because there's nobody there to blame anymore. It's you and God. It's just you and God. And that's where he wants it. That's exactly how he wants it. That's how he wants it to be, just you and him. It ain't over and you're not gonna die. God ain't gave up on you. He spoke a promise over your life, okay? I bind up the spirit of rebellion now in the mighty name of Jesus. I bind it up. I bind up the spirit of disobedience. I bind up, I bind it up now in the mighty name of Jesus. You will serve God with your whole heart in the name of Jesus. I pray for that stony heart. I pray for that hardened heart, that you have a heart of flesh in the name of Jesus. That your heart be softened in this moment. That every scale be removed from your eyes in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare over your life right now that you will eat the goodness of the land because you shall be obedient in the name of Jesus. I break now every demonic tie. I break now every demonic root. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. There has been a split. Okay. There has been a split. If you're in your time of rewards, and you're see, because we're all reaping right now. The Bible says God is not to be mocked. Whatever you sow, you shall reap. So we're in a time of reaping. You're reaping the harvest. You're reaping all the seeds that you have planted. And not just for one season. That you have ever planted in your whole life. You're reaping it now. You're eating what you have planted. If you're eating the good of the land, that's because that's what you've planted. Good. Your seeds were good. You planted good seeds. If you're, if you're eating bitter, rotten, that's what you've planted. Being sneaky, being deceitful, tearing people down, thinking that you can bamboozle and trick God, thinking because you were obtaining stuff, that it puts you in right standing with God. No. If we go to work, we make a certain amount of money, we can get stuff. If we have partners, we can put our money together and get stuff. It doesn't mean that you were being blessed because you were getting stuff. No. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Guys, listen, if you're being rewarded and you're eating the good of the land, what God is saying is you're too anointed to be disappointed. You won't be disappointed in this hour where you was denied before, where you were persecuted before, whether you where you were talked about before, where you were dropped before, you were neglected before, all those things. God says, no, no more. And y'all going to know. Put in, those, put in the comments, y'all. Give me all testimonies because I know. I'll be reading these copies. Y'all give me all. I wish I could just pin them all, but I can't. Okay. I think I'm going to pin one every single day. I'm going to pin a new one every day. <laughs> no more videos. I'm just going to be pinning a new one every day because I see so many. Put in the comments what God is doing for you in your promised land. Okay. Because you're too anointed to be disappointed. You won't be disappointed this time. Don't be fearful. Don't let anything stop you. 
okay i remember before i was like i was like okay I was like, man, you know, I really, I was some things that I I really wanted, right? It was like some, I think it was like some clothes or something that like I really wanted. But I was like, okay, like I can't get this stuff because I don't want to waste my money on this. And then, and then I'm not going to have any money and I got to, you know, da, 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 and like I got to wait again and da, 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 So, and I was sitting there contemplating about getting this stuff. And God is like, hey, you're not in that season anymore. You don't have to now be like afraid that if you splurge on yourself, then you're not going to have any money. Like he was like, you're not in that season no more. No, the more you spend, the more I'm going to give you. <laughs> like literally, he's like, look, spend it. I'm giving it to you to spend. Because I've always been like that, y'all. I've always like taken care of everybody else and I never bought anything for myself, like ever. I would buy like little stuff here and there for me, but it's only like small times in my life where I just buy myself stuff. It was like, I was always buying everybody else stuff around me and worry about everybody else being okay. And then I would just go without or not have, you know, and be like, oh, I'm fine, I'm fine or whatever, because that was just, and God is like, no, we're not doing that no more in this season. Like, I want you to worry about you. I want you to buy stuff for you, like focus on you. And I was like, okay, I'm, I was still, I'm still a little leery and doing it y'all because as I like, as I see something that I want really badly, he literally be like, if you don't get it, like if you don't get it. And literally before I can even get it, before I can even buy it good, it, the money's coming right back. And he's like, I'm showing you, I'm showing you, you're too anointed to be disappointed here. I'm showing you, I'm showing you. And so I'm telling somebody right now, you need to be moving in the season and, and, and occupying, okay? You need to be getting whatever it is that you that you wanted. If you wanted to take a trip, if you wanted to go to Africa, if you wanted to go and just buy a bunch of diamonds, I don't care whatever it is that you want to do. God is saying, do it, okay? If you want to build that house, if you want to get that land, if you want to buy some cattle, if you want to, you know, go to Dubai, whatever that is, God is saying, I'm going to supply. The, the more that you think that you want, whatever it is that you want, I'm telling you, I'm going to do it for you. I'm going to do not be afraid. I'm doing those very things for you. Okay. And I got to keep going back to the rebellious one because he literally has me like, like I'm, it's split here. Okay. Because there's a lot of, there's a lot of one, there's a lot of people that were rebellious and they're not eating the good of the land right now. And they're confused and they don't know what this means. And the enemy is trying to make them think it's over for you. It ain't over. You just got to do the work. What you're seeing other people be rewarded for is because all the work that they've done, you understand? But y'all was so busy. The rebellious people were so, the rebellious were so busy attacking the, 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 the remnant and attacking the children of God. It wasn't even the ones that didn't believe in God that was attacking. It was, it was, it was the, it was the rebellious ones that were attacking the ones who were actually living the life. They were attacking them. That's sad. We all supposed to be children of God and the tares attacking the wheat. That's craziness. But they were. That's what God is showing me. So now you have the rebellious ones that are paying. They're paying a price. They're paying a price. Think about it. The, if, if we're all children of God and the devil's children is over there, there's only... It wasn't, it's only the rebellious and the children of God, the, 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 the righteous and the rebellious. It's only the us over here. So that means the, the rebellious was doing things to the righteous because the devil kids, he on, he on over there somewhere. I don't know what they got. God even got me on them. You know what I'm saying? He got me on the ones over here. Okay. Because we all belong to God. And so if you're in that place, you're going to know if the wrath of God is upon you. You're going to know if you're being chastised. You're going to know if you're receiving, if you're getting consequences, you're going to know. Trust me, you go know, all right? And you have to step a responsibility at some point. You got you to gotta do the work now. It's the only thing that's lacking and missing is the work. You can pray whatever prayer you want to pray. You can say whatever you want to say. You can tell God, oh, God, I'm not. No, you planted these seeds that you're eating now. And there were so many times when God tried to warn you. There were so many war warnings. There were so many. There were so, the warnings were endless. You didn't want to heed those warnings. And now you're eating everything that you've sown because God is not a God to be mocked. What you thought you were getting away with by just saying, oh, God, forgive me. God, forgive me. No. There comes a point in our lives we can no longer say, God, forgive me. There comes a point in our lives when it's, it's time to get this whooping. Okay? Rebellious one. And I'm not going to call you rebellious anymore after this because I just pray to prayer. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I just pray to prayer. And we call rebellion out. Okay? You are a child of God. And I believe that you will eat the good of the land. However, you got to do the work. You got to fast. You got to pray. You got to read your word. You got to give up everything that don't look like God, don't serve God, don't. You got to give it up and be in right standing with God. If you do not, this is a warning. 
If you do not, if you do not give up your wicked ways, if you do not give up that mindset, that heart and heart, that prideful nature, that stubbornness, if you do not, then you will be a castaway. You will be disqualified. And there will be nothing that nobody would do, there, that nobody could do to help you. There will be nothing. There will be nothing at all. See, people don't understand what it's like not to have the presence of God. They don't know what that's like. Many times, um, many times we, 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 we say like, oh God, don't take your presence from me, things like that. You know what? Let me tell y'all something. Like years ago, years ago, since I was very little, since I was, I mean, since I was, since I was a kid, like three, four or five years old, I've, I've, you know, been in church and we, we went to church, we went to church Monday through Sunday and twice on Sunday. Back then you had service like nine in the morning and you had come back again for evening service, like at seven, seven thirty, you came back again. But my mom, her being a minister, uh, uh, preaching and being pastor, all this is, we had to go to church. We was always in the church. All that. Okay. It basically was like our house because we were always in church. Okay. So I was raised knowing God. And so some people that know my testimony, they know some people that don't. So I ran, ran away from home when I was 13 years old. Okay. And it makes me running away. There was, there was a lot of things that I would encounter along the way. Okay. And as I encountered different things, I was abused really badly as a child, I molested, like just some horrible things that happened, which caused me to run. Okay. I ran away. I was like, you know, I don't want no parts of this. I'd rather just live on the streets. Didn't even know what that looked like. Had never, um, you know, did drugs or you know, none of that stuff. Okay. So I ran away and was living on my own at 13 years old. Um, and in the mix of that, there will be times when horrible things would happen to me. And I remembered my mama would always have us on our knees calling on Jesus. And she would say, keep calling until he come. When we would do something, we'll be like four or five, six, seven years old on our knees saying, Jesus, 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 Jesus. <laughs> we, we have to say it so much. We'll just start saying, G, 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 G. <laughs> like, so I remember it will be horrible things happening to me. And I will remember if I call on the name of Jesus. So throughout my life, as I grew to be an adult, I've always knew the power of Jesus. I always knew that he was up there. I always knew that no matter what was happening in my life, that he was real. You understand? So when y'all see me praying, when y'all see me giving these words, when y'all see me telling God I love him, it's real for me. It's real for me. Without him, I will surely die. He's my life. He's the reason that I breathe every day. I understand that. You know, if, if I don't live my life for him, I will, I surely will die. You understand? I surely will die if I don't live for him. There's no other choice outside of living for him, for me. There's no choice. Some people can go and get jobs. Some people can go. There's nothing outside of God. Like I, there's nothing, there's nothing. Okay. And I say that to say, so about 2017, all right. I thought this man was my husband, y'all. Okay. And I'm telling you, I'm, I'm that man is neither here nor there, okay? He was saved, he was super saved, he was a preacher, whatever, right? And I didn't want him. I know my best friend gonna watch this and laugh, but I didn't want him. And so I was like, oh, heck no, because God had told me to give up a certain guy. And I was crying and I was like, Lord, why? You know? And so I gave up and I don't even, I'm letting Holy Spirit have his way here because I've never really told my testimony, told these things, but God is just telling me to tell this stuff, okay? So, and we go by the Holy Spirit. We, I go by what God say to do. Okay. Um, and so, um, I was, I was, I was going to marry this man. Okay. And he was in, he was in, he was in a federal prison and I was going to marry him. I was like obsessed. Okay. And so I was, I was going to marry him. Um, it's about 2016, 2017. Okay. And God told me to give, give him up. I was praying one day. I look up. I saw his picture on top of my TV. And God says, if you love me, sacrifice him. Give him up. So I was like, what? So the next couple of days, you know, I had told like, look, I can talk to you no more. God told me to give you up. He didn't understand none of that. He was just like, what? This doesn't make any sense. Like, what do you got going on over there? And I'm like, look, no, you don't understand like how I feel about God. I have to like adios, whatever. Okay. So as I'm crying one day. I'm sitting in my bathroom and I'm just boo crying about, you know, having to give this guy up. And God said, don't worry. The very thing that you're going through right now, your husband's going through the same thing as well. Okay. And so the next day I go to my neighbor's house because my neighbor, neighbor, we're friends. I go to my neighbor's house and randomly, I'm not going to use the real people's names. Randomly, she's like, yeah, you know, um, Apple broke up with orange. I'm like, oh yeah, why? He said, God told him to. 
and immediately my antennas went up. I was like, but they were like, so like, she was like, yeah, he said, God told him, you know, leave orange because that wasn't his wife. And I freaked out y'all so bad because I did not want to marry this guy. <laughs> leave it to beaver. Okay. Cause the only thing I heard was this man was with this, with this lady and God told him to give her up. And God had just told me, this is my mind y'all. God had just told me that my husband was going through the very same thing right now. Don't worry. <laughs> I went home, I packed up all my stuff and I said, I'm moving to Florida. Okay. And I moved to Florida. Y'all, when I say that God took his presence from me, I was in Florida for a year. I got stuck down there in Florida. I had my little place or whatever, but I was, listen, I have never in my life felt the presence of God from the, from the time that I was a baby to, from the time that I understood how to talk and understood who Jesus was. I had never not had the presence of God. Every time I open my mouth to pray and be being a prophet, like it, it, it hits different. Our, my conversations are different. My love for God is different. He talks to me different. So to have that, then to go to, not only is he not talking to you anymore, you're not having no dreams or you're not nothing, but then his presence is gone. I mean, I was praying and I couldn't feel anything. I was playing music. I couldn't feel anything. I was crying. I, I mean, nothing nothing at all nothing to where I was like Jesus please Lord God please I'm so sorry I mean I was crying out he would not he didn't say nothing his presence he was not coming he was like nah I'm up out of here because you gonna learn he taught me a valuable lesson he taught me a very valuable lesson. You never want to be out of place when it comes to God. You never want to rebel against God. You never want to try to run from God. You don't you don't do that. It took just, it took that time right there. Listen, by the time he finally rescued me from down there in Florida and I got back my behind back to Georgia and my, his presence was back, I had learned. From that day to this day, I had learned. I was like, oh yeah, no, baby. Mm -hmm. So when I say that you do not want God to take his presence, his glory is one thing, all right? His glory is one thing, but his presence, okay? So I'm talking to the one that has been walking in rebellion. You do not want, there is nothing, there is nothing, there is nothing. I'm telling you, there is nothing worth, worth him taking his presence from you. So if you're watching this video and you haven't been walking upright and you've been deceiving yourself and you've been, you know, being rotten to the core, you know, thinking that you're being good or being nice, but you're not, you're, you're tearing people's lives up and you're slandering people and you're, and you're persecuting people. You're tearing people down with your words and you're, 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 you're not being a good person. You're not being a good friend. You're not being a good father. You're not being a good mother. You're not being a good husband. You're not being a good wife. You're not being a good son. You're not being a good daughter. You're not being a good steward. You're not doing these things. It's time now for real to let God clean you up. And he sent little old me today to say, that he still has need of you. That he has not rejected you completely yet. You're just feeling the wrath and consequences. And he says, turn from your wicked. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves. Turn from their wicked ways. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And pray. Then then he's going to hear you and he's going to heal your land. But everything will continue to be dry and stagnant and cursed. And everything will continue to be devoured until you submit to God, until you allow pride to go, stubbornness to go, deceit to go, until you give it all up and say, God, I give everything up, smoking, drinking, cussing, clowning, fornication, adultery, Side chicks, side men, sneaking, creeping, tipping, dipping, whatever. I'm giving it all up. I don't, I can't do this anymore. You cry out to God. Tell God, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, God. I'm sorry. I messed up. I'm horrible. I'm rotten to my core. Change me. Fix me. Help me. What must I do to be saved for real? I want to be saved for real. I don't, I don't want you to take your presence. This is a warning. I'm telling you, God says, this is a warning right now. It ain't over yet, but you got to submit to God. You got to submit. There's no shortcuts in this thing. Everybody right now that's receiving rewards, 
We didn't shortcut it. We couldn't shortcut it. We had to go through it. We had to go through it. We had to live a life being saved for real. And it was hard. And it's still hard every day. But we chose God because we love him for real with our whole hearts. And we can't do anything to disappoint him. Or hurt him. So I say that to say. God has not left you completely yet. You're getting a whooping. There's consequences coming upon you. You're eating everything that you have sown. Thank you, Holy Spirit. God is trying. You need to dig up all of that stuff. You need to dig it up. You need to dig up all of all that crop. Dig it up. Mm. See, Ruby Koshata. What God is showing me is, see, because we're eating, we're eating. He says you'll eat the good of the land, right? Because seeds. So you have two sides here. You have the side where God is dealing with. You have the side that's walking in the promises of God. We are all eating what we have sown now, right? And so the Bible says we'll eat the good of the land. And so in eating the good of the land, that's the things that we have sown. We have sown good things. We have sown. So we're eating that good. So if you're if you were rebellious at one point, you're eating what you have sown. And what God is showing me is you have to dig up all that stuff now. So it's like, it's like I see, oh Jesus, it's like I'm seeing. Uh, it's people and it's, it's, it's ways. And it's, this is, this is what's there. This is what's, there's all the things that God is showing me. These are the things that has, that has been planted now. So physically, physically eating. Mm -mm, mm -mm. You're now, you're now. See, oh God, help me break it down. Lord Jesus. I'm seeing people. I'm not talking to the ones that's being rewarded. I'm talking to the ones that, that are in trouble with God. I'm talking to you. Whereas the ones that's been rewarded right now, I did a video and guys reminded me of that video where there were like shuckles of corn. There are big shuckles of corn. It was, it was growing up and it was, he was talking about that. But this right here, what I'm seeing, those, there's people. These, it's not, you're, I'm looking in the crop. As I'm looking in your crop, there's people. There's people. There's so many people. There's people. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. My God. It's people. Oh, man, the people is what's got you into this. This is how you're going to know it's for you. The ones that God is dealing with right now, you can't be alone. You don't know how to be alone. You don't know how to be alone. And the devil uses that. The devil uses that. Whereas there should be crops that are planted. It's people that are planted. Oh, Arabe Shata. You need to dig it up from the root. You need to dig it up. And what that means is you need to go through and cut it all off. Cut it. I'm telling you, cut it all off. I remember there was a point in time where I had no friends, not one friend. I didn't have a phone for like three years. My phone shut off one day and never came back on. And I just never got another one for three years. For my mom will tell you for three years, I didn't even leave my house. I didn't leave my house. Three years. And that was the most powerful time in my life that changed everything for me. Where I was able to sit with God and talk to God. It, it, I, was, I needed that. And I say that to say that um, the ones that have been operating in rebellion, that have been operating in these things, it's the people. It's the people that you need to cut off. It's the people. It's the people. It's, it's the people that you have to cut off. It's, it's, and it could even be family. It could be people close to you. It could be, it's the people. You, in order, in order to walk this thing out with God, in order to really walk this thing out with him, in order to do what he's called you to do, you're going to have to go into that place of where you shut it down and you shut it out. You're going to have to. You're going to have to go into this place of where you're digging up all those, it's been people. It's like, there's people that have been planted. To, to, to offset you, people that's been planted to get you in trouble with God, people that's been planted that does witchcraft, people that's been planted to put seeds in your mind, people that's been planted. Whereas the people right now that God's rewarding, they're eating the good of the land because they are their good ground. Robo Shata, they're good ground. So they in, in them being good ground, they 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 pro they produce seeds of vegetation that they're not eating. The people that the rebellious ones that God is trying to deal with, you didn't have seed. There were people. People. There are people that were planted. So now as I'm looking in your ground, there's nothing but a bunch of people. And these people are people that it could be girlfriends. It could be boyfriends. It could be, it could be, um, 
parents. It could be witches, warlocks. It could be demons. It could be, but I see people. I see people. In order for you to walk this walk with God, you got to cut every single tie to everything. God says it's the people that cause you to rebel. It's the people. It's the people that cause you. It's the people that cause you to do these things. It is the people. And he says, the very thing that I try to do all the time is isolate you alone. And that's the place that you don't want to be. That's the place that you fight, that you have to be around somebody. It's got to be some kind of noise. It's got to be some kind of person. I got to, I got to, I got to, I know somebody y'all that they send out these, they send out these, um, these, these quotes every day to somebody. They, they send quotes out to people every day. And I always be looking at it. I'm thinking to myself, you're not good ground. You're, you're sending, it's nothing worse to me than people sending, um, encouraging notes to somebody whose life is jacked up and tore up. The reason why is because you're giving them false hope that however they're living, they're reading the goodness. What about sending them scriptures that tells us to deny ourselves? What about sending them scriptures to say, thou shall not commit adultery. Thou shall not commit fornication. Thou shall not sin against God. What, what about, what about, what about, what about sending them the, the realness instead of sending, encouraging God loves you and God's going to bless you. And God's, the devil is a liar. And see, it's the people. It's, it's, it's the people. If you're in trouble with God right now and you're in this consequences, then listen to me. If you want to get free, stop. Cut people off. Every single person, cut them off and get into a quiet place with God. And I'm not talking about two or three days. I'm talking about get in this place with God. I mean, if it's a lady, if you got a, if you got a lady you talk to, you got a man you talking to, you guys, whatever, whatever, cut every single body off. Cut it off and go before God and tell God, God, I'm ready to do the work. Chosen ones and remnants, I love y'all. This video has ended for you. I come today to set the captive free. Because you should be eating the good of the land. You should be eating the good of the land and you're not. You're not because of people. You're not because you don't know how to let people go. You're not because you don't know how to deny yourself. You're not. You're not eating the good of the land right now. You're, you're, there's consequences that's coming up against you. And the wrath of God is coming up against you. You can't even see it. And the devil is sifting you day by day. But God says there's freedom and liberation here for you today. Cut the people off. Close doors. Fortify that flesh. I'm not going to get on social media. No. I'm not going to get on social media for two weeks. I'm about to fast for two weeks. I'm not going to cuss. I'm not going to smoke. I'm not going to drink. I'm not going to fornicate. I'm not going to commit adultery. I'm not going to lie on people. I'm not going to tear somebody down. I'm not going to point the fingers, but I'm going to look at the person in the mirror. I'm going to look at myself. I'm going to evaluate myself. God, deal with me. Robo shata. Tune everybody out. Put everybody off the ship. And God, deal with me. God, deal. what did God do to Jonah? He isolated Jonah in the belly of hell. In the fish's belly, it's the belly of hell. He isolated Jonah. Isolation is what you're lacking. But you're trying to hold on to devices and people and things. And that's the very thing why you're not eating the good of the land because you hold on to people. Father God, I pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus for the person that's watching right now, Lord God. Oh, God, touch them from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. Open their eyes, God. Remove every scale now in the name of Jesus. God, they will not live a life, Father, a double life. I bind it up now in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, God, deal with them now, Father God. Let them know that you still have need of them, Lord God. But they're going to have to go through this process. They're going to have to go through this process, God. God, I pray now that you uproot every person that's been planted in the name of Jesus that has been planted by the enemy, that has been planted by their own self. They've planted people in their lives and they don't even realize that they're still holding presence in their lives. Oh, God, uproot it now, Jesus. Uproot every single thing that's causing this person to be in direct defiance of you. Whether it's their, the way they talk, whether it's what they watch, what they listen to, whether it's the posture of their heart being hardened and stony. God, deal with them now in the name of Jesus. Lord God, open their eyes so that they'll know what's right and what's wrong. God, open their eyes so they'll know what real love is. Oh God, have your way now in the mighty name of Jesus, God. 
I pray as they watch this today, Lord God, they will get free in the name of Jesus. I dig up every childhood seed that was planted in this person's life that caused them to be insecure, that caused them to have a breakdown, that as they grew, they did not mature. Oh God, go back into the childhood, Father God. Dig up the tares out of their wheat, Father God. Reverse every curse, God. Everything that they saw at a young age that caused them to be jaded, that caused them to be paranoid, that caused them to be suspicious, that caused them to have a false sense of doctrine, that caused them, Lord God, to be out of whack and out of touch with reality. Father God, I pray now that you dig up those childhood seeds in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, I pray you release this person today from bondage. Oh God, release this person today, Father God. Give them self-awareness, oh God. Remove every person out of their lives until they obey you. Remove, God, every person out of their lives until they're set free, Father God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, touch them now from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet, Father God. Allow them to walk, Father God, the walk that you called them to do. God, allow them to be holy for you are holy. You said, be ye holy for I am holy. I pray now, Father God, that they will get it right now in this moment. The lights will come on in the name of Jesus, God. I bind up every trick of the enemy. I bind up every hallucination. I bind up paranoia. I bind up mistrust. I bind it up now in the mighty name of Jesus, God. I bind up, God, a, a tongue, a poison. I bind it up now, Father God. I bind up now every shade that's on their eye, every scale that's on their eye. I bind it up loose lips now in the name of Jesus. I bind up now in every devouring spirit that's on the inside of them. I bind up self-sabotage. I bind up rebellion in the name of Jesus. I bind it up now. I bind up now lust. I bind up perversion. I bind it up now. I bind up pride in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, I pray now that you have your way in this person's life. They will never be the same after today. I'm decreeing and declaring over their lives that they shall walk in what you're calling them to walk in, that they shall rise as the mighty woman of God you're calling her to be. He shall arise as the mighty man of God you're calling him to be, and no demon in hell can stop it. Go through the process, says the God. Go through the process, says the living God. Go through the process. Thank you, Jesus. I pray this prayer now in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. This video is longer than I intended, but the Holy Spirit had its way. So, y'all, I'm about to end this video. I wish that I could have prayed more, like what God is showing me. But I whew, I feel like um like my head hurts. I'm white headed. So I can't, I can't, I don't have a lot of virtue right now, <laughs> basically. I have a lot of virtue right now. But I'm coming back again with another video of prayer. Within the next couple of days, I'm coming back. And guys, if you have someone that is lost that you know, if you have someone that the enemy is sifting, you have someone that's blinded with scales, you'll know if you have if you're connected to somebody right now that's living a rebellious life or that's living a life that's that's close from a reprobate or a person that needs to get it right. Send them this video. Send them this video. Because a lot of people right now are up underneath that wrath of God and they're they're falling to suicide. They're falling to all these things. They're falling to hate and they're falling into this even hardened more place. But when really God is trying to back them into, they're backing them into a corner so that he can process them. They haven't done the work and God's saying you have to do the work. So he's trying to back them into a corner. But the devil's coming in and being louder. The devil's coming in and telling them all of these things like you're never going to do this. You're, you know, you might as well do this. You might as well go back out there. You might as well, you might as well do that. And he's having them reach for whatever they can reach for. And that devil's a liar. God is coming for his people, but we have to want to do the work. He can't force us to do the work. There's a process. There's a pruning. There's a purging. There's purification that we have to go through in order, in order to do anything for God. We can't, we can't, we can't walk in our purpose with God if we toe up. The enemy will sift us. I'm going to end this video. You're too anointed to be disappointed in this hour. Go forth. God has greater for you. If you're the one that God is trying to process, let God do the work. Shut out everybody else. Mama, daddy, sister, cousin, whoever. Shut it out. Go through the process. Do the work. It is an isolated walk. It is when God isolates you that he does the breakdown because God hides us before he unveils us. He takes us. That's why Tasha Cobb's song says that, um, 
that that he doesn't break us to hurt us he doesn't break us no he breaks us with grace and many times we want people around but god is like i'm trying to put the people out so that i can reveal you to you i want to break you i need to break you but i have to uncover you i have to strip you naked and i don't want the people to see you like this so i'm trying to call you into a place of isolation where i can show you you and when i show you you it's about to be so much shame it's going to be so much defeat it's going to be so much that i don't want the people to see so i'm trying to isolate you and you're steady trying to hold on to different people and God is saying it's going to shame you because I'm pulling the cover off of you but I'm not pulling the cover off of you to shame you I'm pulling the cover off you to process you but God says I gotta show you who you are and he says you're messed up and you're jacked up and your heart is filthy and God says I'm just trying listen there are so many people that God is about to pull the cover off of them and they're going to start to remember things they did that was so defiled. I even see people having sex with animals. Oh, Rabbi Shaka. Rabbi said, God says there's so much evil and corruption in the heart of these people. And God says, when I begin to show you, it's like you're going to have a horrible breakdown. You liable to cry for days and days and days. But God says, that's the shedding. That's the breaking. There are horrible things that you have done. There are there are disgusting things that you have done. And God says, I got I to gotta dig up all of that filth in you because you never went through the process. Process. So now I'm backing you into the corner and I'm showing you all these filthy things, but you said are reaching. And while I'm trying to show you these things in an isolated place, you're reaching for people and pulling people steady over there. And he says, I'm about to expose you in front of these people. So if you do not want to be exposed in this hour of the filthy mess that you have done, of the horrible, wicked things that you have done, God says, clear the room out because I'm getting ready, shut up. I'm getting ready to expose you to you. I know this video is long. I'm sorry, Lord. Have your way. In order, in order to be truly delivered, God has to go back all through your life. Because what he does is he has to put that mirror to your face and show you of every single thing that you have ever done. Because what it does is it breaks you to a place of humbleness that you remember the sinful nature that you had before God calls you and snatched you out. Many times we'll forget about that. Many times we'll begin now um, 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 to walk in a place of I deserve this and I deserve that. And God, like you don't deserve nothing. Did you forget? Did you forget that I'm God and I saw every single thing that you've ever done in your whole entire life? Okay, have a seat in that chair, clear the room out, and let me show you you. And after I show you you, you're going to be humble, and then I'm going to put my spirit in you, and we're going to begin to do the work, and I'm going to set you free for real. And when you walk, when you step back onto the scene, you're going to be so humbled because I showed you you, and then I covered you. And then I said, now serve me so I can use you. Let God clear the room out. Let God clear the room out. Let God clear the room out. Oh, God, did I shake it? Let God clear the room out. God says, let me clear the room out. Whew. I love y'all. I'm Prophet, and this is Prophet Productions. And send this video to somebody that needs it. Somebody needs this video. Send it to them. I love you guys so much. Talk to y'all soon. Bye. And I end this prayer in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen.